Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zs Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at the Equinix stand inside the Expo Hall at NVIDIA's GTC 2024 conference. I'm joined by Tiffany Osias, VP of Co-Location Services for Equinix. Uh, Tiffany, a quick hello and a quick bio on yourself. And for those who don't know Equinix, what does Equinix do? Yeah, thanks for asking. So, um, you know, I've been in a, my tech career spans about 30 years working with customers and doing product innovation with partners for most of that. And um, over the last eight years, I've been with Equinix, where we are the world's digital infrastructure company. And what that means is we have, you know, data centers in over 30 countries, over 70 metros, 250 plus data centers where we help customers store some of the most sensitive and private data that they have and then help them interconnect into their partner ecosystem. Yeah, you guys are huge. You're everywhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is, uh, I've heard people refer to this as the Woodstock of AI, right? And based on just the traffic around here and the long queues that we had to wait to get in the SAP Center, I wouldn't disagree with that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, you know, we've been here a couple days now. Anything catch your eye? Any surprises here? Well, you know, like you, I've certainly noticed the lines out the door for the sessions, standing room only, yeah. and many that I've been in. Um, wide range of topics covered, you know, from CUDAs to large language models, you know, all the way up to application layer information. So I've enjoyed that. Like, you know, just such a diverse group of people here. One of the interesting things I thought that uh, Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA during his keynote said, it was great to see this as a developer uh, conference. It's like, this isn't a developer conference anymore. There are people here from healthcare, right? There are people from financial services, from uh, doing smart seed implementations. And I think the breadth of the types of attendees today is markedly different than it was just a few years ago. And I think that's great for the whole industry. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah then, uh, so uh, obviously the big theme here is it's the AI show, right? Now, AI is something that in reality isn't new. Right. In fact, if you use Alexa or you drive a car with some of the you know, parallel park assistant things, you're using AI today. But from an enterprise adoption perspective, I think we're still kind of in the early innings here. So if you, if you were to use the baseball analogy, where do you think we are in that cycle? Yeah, I mean, I think you said it right. We probably are in the earning early innings of AI. Um, you know, we've had customers doing machine learning with us for years. We have over 10,000 customers and they're all at very different maturity stages, you know, with their AI journey or their data science and um, machine learning journeys. I'd say we're probably early innings with a lot of runway though ahead yeah. of us. So it might be a long game. Might be a long game, yeah. exactly. <laughs> might go into overtime, might have extra innings. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's exciting. Now, when you talk to your enterprise customers, um, uh, you know, this show is all about bringing AI to life, and I know that's one of the things you can help bring. What are customers looking to do with AI? Because when you when you talk about the use cases, it's literally everything, Yeah. right? So what are they looking to do with it? You know, I think the root of it is customers are either looking to create competitive advantage, um, enrich their customers' experience, enter new markets, you know, create operational efficiencies. So everything. <laughs> I mean, really, it yeah. is, depending on the industry, you're right on. And, you know, we do see customers accomplishing different things. Um, we have some, you know, that are more specialized on the data. Because, you know, AI is only as good as how much it's data. only as good as your data. Exactly. Yeah. So we have some that are in that stage and really looking at, like, diverse data. Because, you know, people talk about biases in AI models, and it's really the bias isn't the coder. The bias is what's in the data. So, you know, so there's a lot of focus on data, um, data cleansing, data tagging, data storage, you know, and then bringing that into an environment where you can make your data work for you. Now, are there particular types of companies, verticals, company sizes, industries that are adopting it faster than others that you've seen? Um, there are certainly digital leaders. You know, there are autonomous vehicles, you know, that have had really um, interesting AI use cases for quite a long time. Financial services, you know, has been another very early adopter with some of the trading matching platforms that they have and research that they're able to provide. But we really see a use case, you know, for just about every industry. Um, medical companies and pharmaceuticals, you know, thinking about how to train models to look at the molecular structure and come up with new drugs. In fact, I think medical is one of the going to have a big impact in the world. Completely. Personalized healthcare. Yeah. As, you know? soon, as long as we get our data in order. Right, as long yeah. as we get our data in order. Yeah, that's a message out to the politicians about unlocking some of the medical data that's yeah. out there. So now we've talked about a lot of the goodness, right? Now, obviously we are in the early innings for a reason, right? There are some challenges here ahead of us. Uh, and what are some of the more common ones that you see companies go through as they look to put their AI vision into action? Yeah, I think one is around prioritization. 
you know, like you mentioned, it's almost limitless. So yeah. how do you prioritize down to what are going to be the use cases that are the most fruitful for your business? So you can't do everything at once. Right. You can't do everything at once. But you also want to open up innovation within your organization because there are problems that people are thinking about solving, but they don't really have a vehicle to do it yet. You know, AI could be that vehicle. So opening up innovation to your organization for folks to think about what to do, then to prioritize it, then to come up with the data. And that's just the beginning, right? Then you have to think through the security of it, the placement of it, the sustainability of it, how you're going to use it when you get it together, how you're going to keep it cleansed and keep it trained. I mean, you know, it's a really complex problem that customers have to solve. So I want to drill down on the sustainability angle. I know that's been a big initiative at Equinix. In fact, you guys can, uh, you can play a significant role in helping companies meet their goals. But um, there's a lot of industry chatter around how power intensive GPUs are today compared to other ones. But then when you listen to the, the pundits, they'll say that, well, the kind of the more you buy, the more you save because you're not using banks or computers. And so what kind of impact do you think AI will have on sustainability? Well, Is I this mean, a net positive or net negative? Well, <laughs> so I think you mentioned a great point yeah. in the beginning, and that's that as technology evolves, the technology itself is becoming far more efficient. So, you know, the power it takes for a GPU today is far more efficient than what it took two and even three years ago. You know, so that's an important component is that the manufacturers are really keen to make very efficient, you know, um, equipment. But then, as you mentioned, even though it's efficient, it also takes a great deal of power. Yeah. Um, and where Equinix is focused is around renewable energy. You know, we were the first data center operator to set renewable energy targets where we're going to be 100% by 2030. We've been 96% the last couple of years. Oh, congratulations. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, that's an important part for yeah. us. So sustainability around energy is one. The second is around advanced cooling. You know, so as these Yeah, that's ships, become a big thing. And there's not many standards around it either, right? True, true. Yeah. And as, you know, you walk around, you were mentioning earlier, like the diversity of the folks here. There are a lot of liquid cooling, you know, operators here as well that are talking through how that can help cool the equipment more efficiently. You know, so that's the second sustainability component. Um, one of the things I love most is what we're doing with the excess heat, you know, because you need to cool down equipment for it to operate effectively. And then you got a lot of extra heat. So what do you do with it? Yeah. Um, this summer, what do you do with it? Well, this summer <laughs> um, in Paris, uh, the Olympics are happening. And if anyone's watching swimming, you'll see the Olympic swimming pool and it's being heated by the excess heat that's coming out of Equinix. Oh, I heard that actually. That's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. We heat homes in Helsinki. Yeah. We heat business parks in Amsterdam. You know, so putting that extra heat yeah. to use is another important sustainability huh. element. Well, you can only ride it over my pool, so <laughs> <laughs> that'd be useful. Um, now, um, Equinix and NVIDIA have you know, you're not just here as a, a vendor, you're, you're a partner of theirs, right? You've had a partnership for a long time. So could you go through that partnership, what it entails and how that helps customers? Yeah, we've been co-innovating with Equinix for years with a number of, you know, um, other uh, partners like that. And the co-innovation has looked like, like you mentioned earlier, like we know we're going to have these really high performance compute workloads that customers are going to be buying. How do we make them work in a data center? So we've been working together on that for years um, and have, you know, working and testing the new GPUs that are coming out, including the new GB2 that's coming out. Yeah. Um, so we've been working. That is with, one big GPU. Yeah. Have you seen that? That's a full stack. Yeah. platform. Yeah. I mean, it's really impressive. If you get a chance to go take a video of that, you'll notice it's also liquid cooled. You yeah. know, there's a, a warm and cold pipe coming out. So we've been working with um, NVIDIA to help co-innovate on does the equipment work, you know, in the data center, one. And second is we've been working with them on our private AI. You know, private AI is really like customers care about where the proximity of their data is and they care about the security around it. So when they buy these, currently the NVIDIA uh, SuperPod, they want to put that in an Equinix location, you know, where they have control over their data. So we've been working with them to innovate on technology and we've also released this offer that I think you were mentioning earlier. Um, it's a managed DGX pod yes, at yeah. Equinix. Well, so that's a great benefit to customers. Like I know the, the big news here, the lead item was Blackwell. Uh, the new GPU, which, and then you mentioned GB200. Uh, and I think the lines of where the silicon ends and where the platform starts has completely blurred. I mean, if you look at DGX, is that a GPU or is it a server? It's, it's kind of both, right? But the price tag on that is really high for most companies. And so, um, from what I understand, customers can actually come to Equinix and file it there, use it there, without having to pay for the, the capital up front, right? Well, customers yeah. are actually buying, yeah. they're buying the DGX pod. It's really about, you know, the value at Equinix is the security piece I mentioned, but it's also the managed services. So companies are looking at 
where do I want to spend my people? You know, people are very important resources. And do I want to spend my people managing this platform or do I want to now invest in data scientists and ML ops folks? So it gives them the opportunity to Probably do that. Probably la the latter, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Versus all the maintenance work. Now we are here at your booth and uh, um, I know you're showing some stuff here, so if people come by your booth, what can they expect to see? Yeah, a lot of the discussion around the managed offering that we have with NVIDIA, you know, it's one of the things that we're, we're highlighting here, as well as the sustainability benefits that we can bring, you know, to customers as they're coming into the platform. But the other thing is talking about what other customers are doing with AI at Equinix. You know, it's something that the team has been sharing quite a bit, because there are just so many questions around how do companies get started? What are you seeing knowing you have so many customers already using AI at Equinix? Okay, so one last question. Uh, I'm sure there's lots of people out there thinking about AI today, but they're not sure where to start. If you could give them a couple of pieces of advice on how to get started with their AI journey, what would those things be? You know, I think the first would be around the data. You know, where do you keep your data today? Do you have it tagged properly? Is it data that's going to pollinate your model? Or is it data that's going to pollute your model? Mm -hmm. You know, that's a really important consideration. And then, you know, do you, do you think of it from a privacy perspective? Like, where can your data be housed? You know, and have those early things in mind so then when you build your architecture and your plan, you have a good digital foundation to start from. I think the answer for most companies is, I don't know where my data is. I'm not sure if it's going to populate or not. And I have no idea how to get it all together. And so exactly. Equinix can help with that, though, I assume. Certainly, as well as yeah. our partner ecosystem. We have great partners that we bring in to help customers. Okay, and so if people want to learn more about Equinix, they go to? Uh, Equinix.com, Equinix certainly. Equinix.com. Okay, Tiffany, anything else you want to add? No, thank you so much for having okay, me. No, thank you. So on behalf of Tiffany Osias from ZS Caravallo from ZK Research saying thanks for watching. Uh, please hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on another episode of Zcast. Yeah.